Hi everyone and welcome back for the final session of today's Spring Festival. I'm Jen Clements and I'm Project and Marketing Manager at Pent Awards. So today in our final session we have Jenny Potts who is the Associate Creative Director at b, &B Studio based in London. Uh, she's previously worked with lots of global brands and is now focused on entrepreneurial food and drink brands uh, striving to make a difference. Hi Jenny, how are you? Hi, I'm really good, thank you. How are you? Yeah, good. Great to see you. Thanks. And, uh, right, well, I'm going to kind of pass over the floor to you. So if you want to go ahead and share your presentation. Awesome. Thank you very much. Right. I'll share screen. Fingers crossed this will work. And hopefully everyone can hear me okay. Yeah, it looks perfect. Okay, all good. So yes, um, thank you very much for having me and thank you whoever's out there. I can't see anyone, so hopefully someone's listening. Um, but yeah, I'm Jenny Potts. I'm an Associate Creative Director at b, &B Studio. And b, b Studio is an independent London-based design agency. Um, we specialize in the creation and development of brands with a focus around visual identity and packaging design. And today I'm going to be talking about how we use the power of creativity um, so that ethics and sustainability don't need to come at the expense of beauty. Um, I'll share some examples of brands that we've created um, to deliberately win hearts, first through desire and then minds through purpose. Um, and I'm also going to share some ways in which we're helping our brands to be more sustainable, again, without having to compromise on aesthetic or quality. So at BNB, um, our ethos is a braver today is a brighter tomorrow. Um, we work with innovators and idealists who believe in a brighter, fairer, and braver future for us all. So whether that's startups inspired by an ethical mission or challenges committed to category change, our brands all help um, us to deliver design that will shape tomorrow. So what do I mean by purposeful brands? Um, obviously every single brand in the world has its purpose, whether that's a product or a service. Um, but I'm talking a little bit more about purposeful brands. So brands that have a real purpose at their core from the beginning, whether that's um, to aid ethical, social or environmental change. Um, or to create better products. For example, Dalston here um, is a brand that we created a number of years ago, and they really wanted to um, shake up the soda caf uh, category and you know, bring craft soda with real ingredients to a market that at the time was saturated with high sugar uh, products lacking in real ingredients. So they're the kind of brands that I mean when I talk about per purposeful brands. Um, but when it comes to communication, um, these brands have a lot to say, usually. Um, but first, they need to get people to listen. Um, and that's why desire really matters. So design from the inside out, the successful brands of today com combine that distinctive purpose then with a loyal community. Um, and now, of course, desire is important for any brand, um, but where it's kind of a little bit different with purposeful brands is they've traditionally been driven to convey their purpose first um, and therefore leave consumers sometimes feeling like they're having to compromise on things like quality, taste or cost um, for the sake of sustainability or ethics. Um, and then making less mean more, this is about sort of beyond the brands we work in that have purpose built in to their kind of brand model or, or their core. At BNB, we also believe, um, you know, as I think most agencies do these days, that we really have a responsibility to help all the brands that we work with um, to become more sustainable. So while sustainable design is, you know, really complex and ever evolving, um, you know, we believe every little helps, um, especially in packaging design, where, of course, our creations are printed en masse. So even little changes um, can make a really big difference. Um, so the examples I'm going to share with you today are united by creativity um, and design that is really created to win hearts first, um, then meaning people are open to finding out more. 
Um, so I'm going to share five case studies that ha have sort of different types of brands. Um, some are brand creations, some are redesigns, sort of different sizes of scale and different products. But they've all either got purpose sort of built into them or we've done things with the brand to really help them convey their purpose or um, be better in terms of sustainability. And um, so the first one is Kit and Kin. Now, in the UK, um, when Kit and Kin first started, we were throwing away around 3 billion disposable nappies a year, um, which is around 500 tonnes of oil-based plastic waste going directly into landfill. And every single one of those nappies um, takes up to 500 years to biodegrade. So inspired by these statistics, entrepreneur Christopher Money and the Spice Girl Emma Bunton um, created a nappy that wasn't only sustainable and plant-based, but also performed as well as the leading nappies on the market. Um, and in addition, because it's plant-based, it's kinder to baby's skin and less likely to cause things like nappy rash. They're also cruelty-free. And as a brand, they had this giving back built in um, where they give money back to the World Land Trust. So whilst the brand's sustainable credentials were really praiseworthy, um, they're not necessarily something that's front of mind when you're a new parent and, you know, you're up all night and you're exhausted and you're having to do all these nappy changes a day. So, you know, trying to sell in a new brand, um, we really needed to understand and speak to this particular consumer um, at that point that they were at in their life. Um, so that was key to the branding challenge, particularly in a market that at the time was so dominated by global brands with a very single-minded performance-based message. Um, so we needed to bring modernity to maternity um, and shift percep perceptions of eco nappy. So again, back to the point I kind of made earlier, as a real kind of, at the time, eco nappies were very much seen as you know not desirable and like you're really going to have to compromise on quality um so we needed to balance that um and, and sort of build in the performance credentials and build trust at that trying time um by articulating the benefits without um you know creating extra anxiety or guilt to those parents so the design deliberately challenges the conventional codes of natural and eco so there's no brown paper or lots of green but instead it builds on a sort of Scandian, Scandinavian inspired um, landscapes um, with subtle natural cues that, that sort of feel trustworthy safe and performance um, and then the brand name we also did the naming for this brand um, and it was inspired by the idiom of kith and kin uh, which means your family so while the tone of voice um, that follows that then is approachable, knowledgeable, and there's a little bit of quirk throughout the brand, they have a little bit of humor, um, trying to communicate the brand values in a very clear and friendly way to help parents navigate um, the category at that time. And then vital to the success of this brand um, was the designs on the nappies themselves. So we treated them like a piece of packaging within their own right. Um, each one featuring an animal on, on the bum, um, which, you know, is like exceptionally cute and really collectible, collectible and had that sort of Instagram ability to it as well. And this contemporary design um, was really key um, in understanding, you know, the modern parents' world, their lifestyle. And there was a real want for these to be things that you want your babies to be seen in you don't have to hide away um within their nursery and you would ha happily kind of have out and on display so again really bringing in that desirability and you know there was a huge consumer response to the nappy designs and and saw the range grow from five then to 18 different animal prints um and the photo friendly kind of design um was a really meant, meant the brand was a real hit on social media um, with those animal designs driving that engagement. And then Kit and Kin's product range um, at launch consisted of the nappies, but also skincare, which we also designed, um, and then the biodegradable wipes as well. And then they've since launched um, a really cute range of 100% uh, organic uh, baby wear clothing, which again was inspired by all of the kind of brand world that we created. 
So in a nutshell, Kate and Kim was all about building purpose with empathy. So understanding that consumer and meeting them where they're at. Um, the stylish and gentle approach to seeding its sustainable stories and understanding the overwhelmed mindset of a new parent. And then in terms of making less mean more, in 2020, Kit and Kin launched um, the world's first reusable nappy uh, made from regenerated nylon, um, which is recovered from fishing nets, which was really cool. Um, and some sort of st other stats by 2020, the brand had prevented 30 million disposable nappies from reaching landfill. Um, they'd purchased and protected 806 acres of rainforest across seven countries. So that's with the sort of uh, working with the World Land Trust built in. Um, they'd begun to donate 3,000 nappies a month to UK baby banks. So they're involved in that as well. Um, and then just in terms of as a brand, um, they managed to successfully transition from D to C, which is where they started into retail. They're now in most kind of big retailers and distributed across 31 countries. Um, and they also won a DBA design effectiveness winner in 2021. So that was a wonderful brand to sort of work on. And we still work with them now. Um, but that's sort of at the heart, a little bit of what B&B do. We create brands um from scratch and then continue to work with them for a number of years so that was that was a really fun one so the second case study is raw halo so we were challenged to help raw halo um take their raw ethically sourced chocolate brand into the mainstream so Previously, they were quite niche. They were sold in stores like Holland and Barrett, but they really wanted to get into the multiples. Um, and to be able to do that, they really needed to be able to lower their RRP, but they also needed um, more brand presence, more shelf standout, and to feel a little bit more accessible um, while still feeling uh, premium and luxury. And the other thing was they were really kind of overpackaged. So this is their previous design. It came in a cardboard box with loads of foils. Um, and then within that box, there was a flow wrap, a plastic flow wrap. Um, so it was all about kind of a bit of a de delicate balancing act with what can we take away um, trying to sort of appeal to more mainstream consumers whilst keeping the premium feel and whilst still communicating raw and vegan and bring in some sort of taste cues and quality. So the new design um, delivered on these aspects. So first, the creation of an instantly recognizable standout logo, which was designed with the packs in mind to be sort of as big as possible for shelf standout um, and really built on their name. So they already had their name. It, we thought it was a brilliant name. So we really wanted to kind of dial that up. Um, and then we created this negative space within the raw and the halo. Um, that's an, a halo shape, which gave us then an area to be really clear with our communication of flavor, raw organic, uh, chocolate and vegan and dairy free. And we had this really bold color palette that sort of forgoes the codes of luxury, um, creating that, a whole new language really for premium accessible chocolate. You know, this is, this is in a world where everything's quite black and gold and with the sort of uh, raw chocolate, very green and brown paper. So, we also moved away from those boxes and the plastic flow wrap inside and moved to a paper wrap, um, which, you know, obviously hugely reduced the sort of amount of materials used, plastic free. Um, but keeping that sort of luxury element, we still had some touches of gold foil, um, but done in a more sustainable way. Um, and then we also created this secondary icon for the brand, um, which sort of cleverly communicates the name Raw Halo, um, but also the brand essence of raw chocolate that's gr growing with good, glowing with goodness, not growing, um, with this sort of cacao bean in the negative space of the halo. Oops, sorry. Um, so the new paper wrap gave us the opportunity to, you know, further communicate some of the really good brand credentials on the inside. So again, this was some of the things they weren't really necessarily outwardly communicating, um, but they've got amazing things that they can shout about, ethical credentials, health credentials. Um, and, and we kind of wrote these under the 
uh, brand essence idea of glowing with good vibes. Um, and the brand world kind of continued on from the essence of glowing with good vibes. So we tried to keep it really kind of light, joyful, mindful, but feeling really positive as well. So Raw Halo was all about building purpose with bravery. So not being afraid to challenge the category to tell a fresher, better story. You know, premium doesn't have to be overpackaged and Raw Halo vibrant and striking design um, really stood out in a world of serious premium chocolate. Um, trying to bring a new message of healthier choices for people and planet. And then in terms of making less mean more, um, we also enabled co-printing. So we were printing a lot of the packs together um, with a sort of smart color system, which saved inks, printing plates, wash downs and setups. Um, the packaging changed allowed Raw Halo to reduce its RRP, which meant it did then get into the multiples. Um, moved into recyclable packaging, which currently saves, I think this stats are a couple of years old, so it might be more than this now, but an estimated two tons of plastic and four tons of cardboard waste per year. They increased sales, exceeded growth and distribution targets and became a plastic free business. So this is, I think, one that, you know, really clearly kind of articulates that we took a lot away and we took a lot of the kind of shiny layered packaging um, out of the brand, but actually built in much more equities and design, um, which has seen the brand obviously go from strength to strength. So the third case study is a new brand creation. Um, we've literally just launched this in the last few months um, called Humans Being, uh, which is a new sustainable athleisure wear founded by Rita Aura. So this was all about um, trying to share people's values through community. So we felt like it was important to create a brand that brought together style and substance, ensuring the brand's ethical credentials um, were communicated without compromising on style. Um, and inspired by the brand's purposeful commitment to people and planet. So this brand also has the giving back to the World Land Trust built into it. We were keen to create a name um, and identity that conveyed a sense of community, um, team spirit and proactivity. So Humans Being was the perfect solution. Um, again, we did the naming for this brand with a simple switch of uh, a single letter. Human Beings is transformed into a, from a descriptive noun into a more of an active sentence, um, implying a community of doers, whether that's being active in sports or around being um, an activist around sustainability. And then the brand identity itself um, brought the name to life in a really simple but accessible way um, with a typographic logo with kind of bold type, but so, subtle works in the M and the G um, to sort of represent dynamism and movement. And then it's supported by this um, vibrant mint green dash at the end of the word, um, which is a key visual asset um, and able to work then with the graphic identity system. Um, it can be used as a signifier on the garments. It also then helps um, to sort of create a logo that can read on. So humans being stronger, kinder together, so these were the three pillars that we created for the brand um, Stronger Kinder Together. Um, and they represent the brand's philosophy, uh, which extends from celebrating strength, protecting the planet and supporting each other. Um, and crafted to work with the brand name, these pillars then set a system for communication that extends across uh, digital and packaging design. And Rita Ora actually has this little smiley face uh, tattoo on her ear, which we just thought was amazing in, with that link to humans and, and sort of positivity. Um, so we took that to then create a suite of sort of three circular icons inspired by that tattoo. Um, and as a, as a unit, they were kind of accompanied by the phrase, humans reusing, humans recycling, humans caring, humans being. And those three icons represent those um, three pillars that the brand's built on of Stronger Kinder Together. And they're another thing that then we can use on the garments to brand the garments themselves. Um, and then obviously while sustainability um, is really vital to the brand's purpose and philosophy, it was important not to compromise on the style credentials. So 
real focus on community um, was key in the tone of voice, for example, bringing a sense of people and purpose where possible. So using copy like we sweat the big stuff, let's talk impact human to human, just making sure we're always kind of going back to people, um, even when we're talking about the brand and, and the products. Um, and with direct consumer really vital to the brand, um, they've launched as a D2C brand. Um, we created the look and feel of the website, um, combining sort of intuitive online navigation and shopping tools with clear brand storytelling um, encompassing that founder story, environmental impact, and really sort of explaining the materials innovation. So all of these products are made from um, sustainable materials. And then the other thing that was key um, to the brand to the brand was their commitment to kind of help people um, buy their garments to, for sort of multiple use. So they really wanted to get that um, across. They deliberately de designed the garments to take you sort of from the gym to the coffee shop um, and beyond. So our art direction for the sort of broader brand world um, was to ensure that this sort of contemporary lifestyle was captured throughout Candid photography spanning from more active uh, uh, people working out, for example, um, to more relaxed moments. So people chilling on the sofa in, in the sort of loungewear. Um, and also in fe featuring sort of fashion style um, styling, as well as the expected fitness shots. Um, and then we also wanted to make sure we were being sustainable sustainable on the things that on the packs that we were doing and on, on the print elements so the um sort of craft paper envelope you know uses minimal print and um, we use this little bit of tape which is a link again to that mint green dash um but these were actually scalable packs as well so if you only order a sports bra you only get a kind of small pack whereas if you order a big order you'll get a bigger box and they auto scale to that size of the order um, and how much space you need. So you'll never get a huge box like you do with some companies um, with a tiny thing in it. Um, this also kind of shows how we're using the name to read on, so humans being sustainable. Um, and then also we use that green dash for tags. Um, these tags were actually printed with um, on seeded paper again, so just making sure there's sort of all the use um, and using natural materials. So Humans Being was all about building purpose with community. So bringing like-minded people together with a clear commitment to the brand's values. Um, and it was built around that stronger kind of together values um, leveraging those stories with key visual assets. And now this brand really has only just launched. Um, but I think what's really great about it is that they have a real want to be at the forefront of the movement to reject fast, fast, fast fashion, sorry, it's hard to say, um, and encourage multiple use of clothing. Um, they have a 360 closed loop system um, set up to recycle their products. So you can send them back when you are done with them and they'll turn them into more products. Um, they embrace innovative materials. So um, the quality of the actual products is really good, despite them being made from um, sustainable materials. Um, and they have that adaptable packaging to reduce waste and shipping space. So the next case study is Beaver. Um, Beaver Farms was founded in 1984 in the Vale of Beaver, which is in the uh, it's in the countryside in, in Leicester, so in the Midlands. Um, and it's a premium cordial and sparkling soft drinks brand. Um, Beaver Farms always had a really close connection with the land and they take their environmental responsibilities really seriously. So from stewarding um, the local landscape and helping to protect wildlife um, to lessening the brand's impact on the Earth's infinite resources. So inspired by the regenerative approach of the working farm, um, and protecting the local ecosystem, encouraging biodiversity. Our redesign um, really sort of, sort of put the wild back into Beaver um, and back into the heart of the brand and really also start telling their stories, um, which they weren't doing previously. So Beaver's new graphic um, design and identity, it, it was really all about seeking to do a sensitive 
evolution um, of the key assets, which were already hugely recognizable on their previous design. Um, so they had the handwritten type, they had the sort of ingredient depiction, and they had the angled label. Um, but for us, it was about taking it into a kind of more wild direction. Um, so the sensitive update retains the essence of the existing brand equities, um, but expressed in a new way. So redesign was about setting strong foundations uh, for the brand's future development and increasing its relevance to contemporary consumers. And then inspired by the care that Beaver really take about um, their farm and the ecosystems, um, our redesign was also not about just visually making it feel more natural, more contemporary and more authentic, but also verbally weaving in those stories that the brand wasn't previously communicating. Um, so that was really important. And so re by reigniting those, uh, the pride um, and the connection to the countryside, they're much more able now um, to further build their brand world around the wild by nature positioning and tell those stories. So I think previously, for example, on their Instagram feed, it was just very much about product and not about all these amazing stories that they have to tell about the countryside and how they look after it and all their like great ethical farming practices. Um, the typography of the logo was crafted by Rachel Joy Price, who is brilliant to work with if um, anyone needs a typographer. Um, but it was all about making it feel less ornate um, and less sort of calligraphic and more naturally drawn. Um, and then the illustrations, which were created in house at BB, um, instead of them being sort of perfectly placed on pack, it was more about getting a sense of growing and making them feel um, more contemporary. And then our new design um, also needed to go across a huge number of SKUs. Um, and the previous design, they were using um, separate Pantones for each SKU. So they had like 50 different colors that they were using across the range. So to avoid waste of inks and energy, we created a sort of smart color palette of just eight colors um, that could replicate and replace those 50 um, colors in the existing print set up and be clever about how we use them and how we sort of printed them together, um, really to save loads of ink, loads of paper and loads of energy without compromising on the colorful um, range of the design. Um, and then the rebrand sort of instilled a new confidence um, in the brand and freed them up creatively to sort of introduce new ranges, whether that be um, ready to drink or their new botanical range, which I think launched last year. Um, and again, has a slightly different illustration style and um, slightly more kind of premium typography, but still really fits in with that brand world and the world uh, by nature positioning. So for Beaver, it was all about building purpose through storytelling. So reinvigorating the brand to express its uniqueness and communicate its stories. Um, Beaver's redesign set strong foundations for the brand's future by telling its stories and increasing its relevance uh, to contemporary consumers. And, you know, making less mean more for this brand was all about introducing that sort of simplified color palette. So from 50 to just eight colors, drastically reducing the amount of materials, chemical solvents and energy needed um, without compromising on the design, also saving the brand a lot of money. Um, and the revamped uh, brand was recognized in the Grocer Gold Award last year, um, where it was awarded soft drinks brand of the year. So that was great news um, for them. So then the final case study is Mozo. So Mozo works with coffee growing communities. Um, and since 2015, they've worked extensively in the Democratic Republic of Congo. They've built a maternity clinic and they've helped farmers um, set up their own cooperatives, empowering them to manage um, their own production and introduce sustainable growing practices. Um, and the brand's currently working on projects um, with coffee growers in Nicaragua. So what makes Mozo different is the fact that um, 
the majority of ethically sort of positioned coffee brands um, aren't this, but they are a fixed social dividend, um, which is built into their business, ensuring constant accountability and continued investment in their own um, C2C fund. Um, so every bean sold um, is more money into that C2C fund, which then does good um, in different countries around the world. So the previous uh motto identity looked like this and it took its cues from the world of italian coffee but as a result it, it become kind of hard to differentiate from a lot of other brands and it started to feel quite generic um, and we wanted mozo to have a brand that really reflected its values and um its unique business model so the new branding was centered around a core tagline of coffee community connection that boldly states Mozo's key commitments. Um, the brand name means hub in Italian, and they see themselves as a catalyst for connection, bringing together coffee growers, coffee makers, and coffee drinkers around the world. So the dynamic new logo was designed with digital in mind. They sell a lot direct to consumer and direct to trade online. Um, and the idea was through this sort of extended Z, um, we could present Mosso um, as a coffee like, sort of platform for communication, but for all these other good, great things that, that the brand does. Um, and then the new branding when it came to Pack was brought to life with a kind of really unique and exciting color palette within that coffee section. Um, really sort of fresh mint green with bright orange, um, which really stands out on shelf. Um, and then that space within the logo can be used for hero in the variant type. Um, and then we had a suite of sort of contemporary uh, secondary colors, which were used to differentiate the range. And then the hub for connection, coffee and community idea sort of lives on beyond animation. So we can use it in print in different ways on pack. And then also we kind of use it as a framing device uh, with photography as well. Um, and we also created this sort of set of illustrations drawn in house at BNB, um, which visually sort of capture Mozo's world. So um, the kind of relationships that they have with the farmers, but then also with the drinkers and, and so on um, and can be endlessly sort of redrawn to tell the different elements of their story so it's all about having all of this adaptability um, but making sure they were being really proud about um, all the stories they had to tell so Mozo was about building purpose with pride and having the confidence to express their uniqueness and stand out for what they stand for um, reimagining its design around its brand and not its product, leading to unique and bold look and feel. And for Mozo, they moved into 100% recyclable aluminium capsules, uh, which was really interesting, actually, because a lot of people think, oh, well, metal is that good. And there's a lot of kind of compostable um, coffee pods out there. But for conversations that we had with them, Aluminium is the best way to sort of protect the coffee inside and make it last longer, but it is also recyclable and they have their own closed loop recycling scheme. So you, they'll come and pick it up, them all back up from you and then they'll recycle them into, into new pods. And I think the compostable pods, whilst they sound great, a lot of people don't have composters at home. And so they, a lot of them aren't actually being, um, you know, treated in that way. Um, and the brand continues to contribute to its C2C fund. Again, this is a brand that was uh, redesigned that was only launched last year. So we've yet to sort of see the impact of it. Um, but hopefully they'll sell a lot more of coffee so they can give a lot more to their C2C campaign. So I feel like I spoke for a long time, but to summarize, um, some of the ways in which we've made purpose beautiful for some of the brands that we've worked with. Um, so with empathy, so Kit and Kim was about understanding their consumer and meeting them where they were at. With bravery, by not being afraid to challenge the category, for example, Raw Halo, and tell a fresher, better story. With community, so bringing like-minded people together with a clear commitment to your values, um, which was uh, humans being some of these are a little bit interchangeable um 
because we did a bit of it, all of it on some of them. Um, with storytelling, so setting the foundations for a brand's future by telling its genuine stories. Um, and with pride, having the confidence to express your uniqueness and stand out what you stand for for what you stand for. And then finally, um, just some of the kind of key ways in which we've helped brands um, take things away and be more sustainable, but without compromising the design. So by embracing innovative materials, uh, meet, you know, luxury doesn't need to be overpackaged. Co-printing to save on inks and washdowns um, can actually save a huge amount of resources um encouraging multiple use of product and pack um using adaptable packaging and embracing recyclable materials and closed loop systems so that's all from me thank you very much for listening well thank you jenny for that um some really great examples that you shared with us there um one question that we have is were there any kind of common challenges that you had whilst working on these because they're all slight they've obviously got a common kind of theme but mm -hmm. they're all quite different so yeah I think each brand always comes with its own um challenges I think it can also depend on how brave the client is um for example, the Raw Halo client was brilliant. Um, they're actually, uh, the founders are a husband and wife, which is really sweet. And, and you know, we presented three routes to them of varying kind of levels of, of braveness and pushing the category. And, and they went for the for the bravest one, which was great. Um, so yeah, it can also depend on the client, I think. But I think it's always about what's doing what's right for the brand. Um, we very much approach every brief as... What's the right thing to do for the brand? Not not following trends and not um, kind of, yeah, just doing things because it looks good from a design point of view, but, but trying to make brands beautiful, but for the right reasons. Yeah. Hopefully that makes sense. <laughs> yeah. um, and then another question we have, sorry, it's a bit long, I've got written down. So do you think it's easier to work with newer, more entrepreneurial brands on shifting their focus to making more purposeful design as opposed to kind of more established brands? I think that's a great question. Um, before I worked at b, &B I actually worked at another agency where I worked on much bigger brands. And I think the truthful answer is neither of them are easy. <laughs> um, they both have their challenges, but for different reasons. So obviously, and we we work on um, a few, quite a few bigger brands here at B&B as well now. And I think, um, yeah, with startups, usually they have to do something better um, because they're up against the big brands. So when they're entering the market, it's not enough to just be, you know, the same as the big brands because the big brands have already got a lot of money behind them people know them so the challenges that are coming in have to challenge and they have to have a better product or be more ethical or more sustainable or all three you know in an ideal world um so they do tend to have more built in to them but when you're designing that doesn't necessarily make it easier um you still have to sell it in and you still have to do things for the right reasons um some I think some startups have more of a challenger mindset. So they are a little bit more open to do stuff that is maybe a little bit pushing the category because they've got that sort of challenger mindset that that isn't always the case. Um, and you also get that mindset with some of the bigger brands if you're working with the right people that have a real vision and really want to push. Um, so I think a lot of it is all about the, pe <laughs> the people and the client behind behind the brand and how far they how far, you know, how brave they are, how willing they are to push things. Um, so, yeah. It must be so exciting it's just, when you kind of, yeah, it must be so exciting when you put an idea out there, which you're like, this is crazy. And then they go, yeah, let's do that one. Yeah, <laughs> which is great. And, and I do think, you know, it is more difficult for some of the other brands, uh, some of the bigger brands, because, you know, they've got to get it through stakeholders and they have to... Um, you know, any little change that they make is on such a massive scale, yeah. whereas it's probably easier to do that from the get go. But what we find with a lot of uh, the startups that we work with, they don't have they don't actually have enough. Um, well, I can't remember what the word is. They, they don't have a, they're not printing an, a, as enough things or they're not buying 
enough glass jars to be able to use them. So sometimes it's a case of they have to do the best that they can do at the time. Um, for example, Pippa Nut started in a plastic jar because they didn't have the numbers to be able to go into glass. And then over time, when we work with them, they're now, they're now in a bespoke glass jar because they sell enough to be able to do that. So a lot of the time it's about making the best of, of what you can, whether you're a big brand or a small brand. Brilliant. OK, um, I think we're just about running out of time. Um, thank you, Jenny, very much. Um, and you. as you know, we've got a little bit of an exclusive announcement uh, mm -hmm. for people who are online. Um, so it's about the Pentawars Festival. So the live version that we have, um, I'm happy to announce that it will be on the 9th of November at the Science Museum in London. Um, we have two very exciting speakers. Uh, to announce, which I'm just going to share quickly now. Um, mm. So we have Stefan Sagmeister from Sagmeister Inc. and Carola Sebold from Pantone. So for those of you who are not aware, so Stefan is an Austrian graphic designer. He's known for um, his designs for the music industry. He's worked on covers for like the likes of the Rolling Stones, Aerosmith and Lou Reed. Uh, we have actually had a talk um, from him before, a very quick snippet, and it was incredible. So it's definitely not one to miss. Uh, and Carola is the head of Global Key Accounts at Pantone. So I'm sure everyone on here will know who that is. Um, but they are, of course, the globally recognized leading source of color expertise. Um, we will be showing more information on our website about this very shortly. And there will be a waiting list as well for um, our tickets because they won't be out just yet. But just let us know if you're interested and then you'll be the first to know. Uh, we'll be showing more information on our socials. So at Pen Towards. Um, and yeah, thank you again to Jenny for your amazing presentation, for your time today. And thank, thank you for having for me. tuning in to all of today's sessions. Great. Thanks for having me. I'll speak to you soon. Thanks and bye everyone.